like a, a very large implement, but this is for picking in close quarters. That's right, it is. And it's ideal for plaster man. It's a two and a half pound pick. And uh, sometimes they have a steel shank. This particular one hasn't. So that's the head of the pick that they would have used in the, in the Antlin district in the 1890s. Somebody's pretty proud of their work. I mean, there's actually uh, crossed uh, some, sort, some sort of insignia right oh, here. Oh, sure, cross pick and shovel. And two and a half pounds, and that's what you'd use in close quarters. Yeah, and they're very, very difficult to get now. You need iron to get hold of gold, I Oh, guess. you bet. Okay. Some more of the historic photographs. This is a hotel at Pine City. The uh, Pine City was, there were two major towns in the Atlan district. One was Atlan itself, which was probably a population of some four to 5,000, and Pine City, which, uh, which was between two and 3,000. It was a rival just, just on the southern end of uh, Surprise Lake. And uh, this, is, this is the most famous hotel in Pine City. These guys look pretty well to do. Oh, sure they are. And some of these men were making ex fabulous wages per day because they were in on the, on the, on the beginning of the rush. I, I hadn't, for some reason, expected sternwheelers, but they came down Atlan Lake. Yeah, they did. They came down Atlan Lake from Carcross, and uh, this is the Gleaner, actually, one of the sternwheelers that actually pulled into 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 Atlan. Great name and, for uh, a sternwheeler. Well, sure it is. Could have called it the Sniper. Oh uh, yeah. And, and then they come right into Atlan. And this is this is this shows uh, Atlan Lake in the foreground here, and, and the city of Atlan in the background. This was taken about 1904, I think. This particular shot. It wasn't a mere head shot. So this would just be when Atlan is close to its height, maybe a little over the top. Yeah. There, is this one of, who was the name of the photographers, the Muirheads? These are the Muirheads, this is the Muirheads. They had great com a sense of comedy and a sense of humor oh, when sure they, they took did. their stuff. Sure. What's this one called? This is called Girl Wanted, and this is not unusual because the guy is doing his own washing and his only companion is a dog, and the, the dog, as you can see, is not helping in the washing, so, so that, uh, that, and of course women were a real premium. When a, when a woman came into town, I, especially a young woman, that it was not unusual for hundreds of miners to come down from the creeks if they'd heard of this yeah. and simply watch this apparition step off the boat. It was really quite <laughs> astonishing. And my grandfather mentions it because he was in Atlanta in 1898. Not my great uncle, but also my grandfather. And he mentions that, that, that when, they, when a woman came off the boat, uh, a young woman in her 20s, all, all the men would go down there and look at her. Not in any lewd or lascivious no. way, just in a, in a very honorific wonderful way. Oh, no doubt about it. Dogs love having their pictures taken, don't oh, they? Sure they are. This yeah. is the Canine Express. Does that really exist, or is this another Muirhead joke? Well, no, uh, Muirhead has a sense of humor, they're both Muirhead brothers, but, but they, they definitely did use this particular wagon to haul around various Express articles, and you know, why, not, why not use the dogs instead of manpower? Here's a family outing and a half. Look yeah. at how many kids are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. They can't be all one family. Well, it's hard to tell. It, it, you know, it looks like it uh, could be, but it could be some neighbor kids in there, too. This is at Pine City, not Atlin, and uh, this is a holiday. So uh, probably the 24th of May, actually, Mike. It's hard to tell. They like their holidays. You bet. And this is the 4th of July in Atlin in about 1900, and the, you can see the hurdlers just finishing the race. And this is the winner here, and his, the second place man is just going over a hurdle on the right-hand side of the photograph. They were mostly Americans. I guess that's why the 4th of July And is... competing for fairly good purses, Mike. Yeah. There is the city as uh, Atlan became. Circa what, what era? What year are we talking about here? Well, we're talking... This, is, this shot was taken in 1901. Again, a mere head shot. And it shows some of, the, some of the town of Atlan. Not all of it, but most of it. And it was a significant city at this time. Even then, it was probably close to 3,000. As I said, it was a couple of years beyond the, the big rush, which was really 98 and 99. Yeah. Again, the people who hauled the money made some money themselves. Oh, sure they Somehow did. I always associate Wells Fargo with American history. Well, Wells Fargo was originally a California company, started in 1852, but, but it, was, uh, it was also well known in British Columbia and in the Yukon and in Alaska as well. And so this, this sign, which you just held up, was a, was a Wells Fargo sign. And they were, they, were, they were one of the favorite of the, I guess, the favorite express company of the miners because they were so dead honest. Yeah. Wells Fargo's word was its, uh, was its bond. Would Barnard Express, the BX Express, get up as far as Atlanta, or were they more southern BC? No, although they did deal also with Wells Fargo. Yeah. Okay. We've got uh, some shots of some of the, the people who gravitated to this area. Without the government house, I guess you really didn't exist as a town. Yeah, this is the, this is the provincial government office in Atlanta, still standing, by the way, Mike. 
and uh, indicates the importance of, of Atlan as, as a mining district, because this is a pretty impressive building. The fact that they did have to change from uh, the theory that this was the Northwest Territories to the fact that this was Northern British Columbia, did anybody lose any claims as a result of that transfer? Actually, there, there's some debate about that. And if you ex study the, the report of the commission that was sent in there to clear up this, this, this mess, because nobody really knew, and it really wasn't Strickland's fault either. He thought it was, he thought it was the Northwest Territories. They weren't, we're not very far from Fort Dagish, but it just happened to be over the line. Yeah. And they were in British Columbia. Well, they so they had to change to British Columbia mining lines. The banks went in there, quick as could be? Oh, sure. The banks, there were three banks in Atlanta. This is one of them. This is the Merchants Bank of Halifax. And this is the Bank of British North America. And uh, again, it's rather interesting. If you get any of these old bank notes from these banks, these, these are quite important collector's items and quite valuable too, Mike. Yeah. And they, of course, made their money and, uh, and lots of it oh, by, sure by uh, what? Uh, would basically taking the golden trade or what what was they would function? get they would get a premium on the gold they shipped out they would get a certain percentage and it varied from district to district obviously you wouldn't want to weigh any three pound gold nuggets in a scale no. like this this was a minor scale it was a it was a portable scale he would use this on the claim just to check out quickly approximately what his day's take would be uh, you know that would hold probably maximum of about a quarter of a pound of gold in the pan with the weights counterbalancing on the other side and they would use troy weights in this too mike now, when you talk about the word sniping, you, you mentioned that word a number of times. What's yeah. the, what is the concept of sniping? Well, sniping is, is going over, uh, usually going over old workings and uh, cleaning out crevices that maybe have not been cleaned out adequately by the, by the first miner on the ground. So that a sniper is an individual who goes along looking for uh, diagonal crevices and uh, seeing if the bedrock has been broken deep enough and so on. And a really quite a fascinating way of making a living not so much anymore because most of the ground has been gone over. Although there are occasional spots, Mike, you can still snipe in and uh, do quite well at. Basic, I guess, like sniping, the, the rifleman picking off individual targets, going after individual nuggets. Well, these guys are picking off individual nuggets, right? Yeah. As so often is the case, fire enters Atlan's history. Yeah, well, this is, this is actually late, late in the game for Atlan. This is 1914, and, uh, and this fire virtually destroyed Atlan. Although surprisingly, Mike, it came back after they shot because they were still working on these creeks. You see, you must realize that, that Spruce Creek the, the, surpassed the actual, by the, by the 1960s anyway, surpassed the, the, the um, production of, of Williams Creek and Lightning Creek. So that Spruce Creek became